So normally around this time of year, there's not a whole lot of electric supercharger stuff going on, especially this year because of the heat. But I have a really cool project I wanna share with you all. I'm not the only one making these electric turbos, electric superchargers. In fact, we have a forum called Electrified Boost. And one of the guys on Electrified Boost has a really cool setup that he's working on. And he's joining me today. His name is David. He's got cool stuff. David, why don't you start off by telling us about your car? Well, good morning, Alex. Thank you for having me on today. Um, so it's a 2004 Mazda Speed uh, Miata. Um, that I took the original four cylinder out after having a bunch of issues with local builders not building my stuff properly. So uh, my wife and I moved to North Carolina and I decided to put a Chevy LS style motor in it. It's a 5.3 aluminum block LS engine, mild cam. It's a sloppy stage two setup, uh, thinner head gasket to bump up compression. It's running through a CD009 Nissan uh, 350Z transmission to a Ford 88 rear end. And what kind of racing do you do with this car? I mean, what do you do with it? Is it a daily driver? Do you drive around? Do you do drag racing? What exactly do you do with this thing? Prior to putting the LS in and putting a lot of time and energy into that build, I did autocross it quite consistently with the factory turbocharged 1.8 liter. But as of right now, it's it's mostly just going to be street strip. So what made you decide to go with electric boost as opposed to a more conventional turbo or a blower? For me, it's the engineering aspect. I like to tinker on things. Uh, conventional is tried and true. And this, this vehicle is already traction limited with the power that it's at. Um, so having a supercharger or turbocharger that's constantly running essentially so with you know turbocharger you have constant back pressure heat i don't want a lot of heat soak in the engine bay uh, it's hard to evacuate the heat as it is with the vehicle and with a supercharger you just constantly have that parasitic loss on a supercharger now i did have nitrous set up on this vehicle um and it, it, it worked very well but uh in the small town that i live up in new hampshire the closest place to get bottles filled is about an hour away Every so often, you have to recertify bottles, send them out, ship them out. So I thought, why not do like a hybrid? So I started doing um, some videos online. I came across Cletus McFarland, uh, who had tested, uh, I think it was uh, Torque Amp. And, right. uh, you know, it, he had some, you know, variable results for a, a mass produced, limited run market, really, is what it was for. So I thought, you know, what what's available so then i came across your channel and that's what kind of got me down the, the rabbit hole and kind of digging into <laughs> things and 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 truth it took me probably close to a full year before i started actually planning and prepping and purchasing um all the products just because you've done so many different projects saw what worked saw what didn't necessarily work and you know i didn't want to go down that rabbit hole and be the one pioneering it as uh right. you're already doing yeah. that so let somebody else um, burn their money literally <laughs> in this case right <laughs> unfortunately yes but i mean you definitely have paved the way and um, you have you have proven results so that's that's kind of where you know I, I post on some of the miata v8 forms and stuff like that and they're kind of they were naysaying at first and then i was sharing your videos and sharing my project and i think they're kind of on board now you know, especially yeah. with the most recent results that I've, I've had with, uh, in the testing that I've done so far. Is weight distribution a factor at all in your decision? No. I mean, I could do a rear mount turbo. Um, you know what I mean? And, and put the, but it's just complexity of getting oil all the way back there and right. running all those lines. And then you, you still have to have the complexity of just running the charged piping all the way back to the front of the engine anyway. So space is, a, is an issue with the vehicle in itself. Now, as far as weight distribution goes... Having this in the rear puts more weight over the rear axle, 
um, right. which will should in theory help with you know acceleration straight line anyway. And it actually brings it closer to that 50-50, true 50-50 distribution. Yeah, and a Miata is really a handling car, although they do drag race pretty well, especially since you got that 5.3 with the aluminum block. Now, where did you get the idea for using twin electric motors? That's the part that I think makes your project unique and really cool. Well, uh, it all comes down to more power. Um, Distributing the load of the motors as a brushless motor RPM increases, the torque decreases, and we have to spin these up pretty fast to achieve the impeller RPM that we want. So I wanted that extra little bit of torque to be put into the system, especially as it takes more power to spin the the blower, the impeller, at higher RPMs. It takes just exponentially more power. So I figured an extra motor with uh, a 1.5 to 1 gear ratio would help achieve the impeller RPM that I was looking for. The other thing that I think makes your project really cool is the fact that you are using these twin motors and twin ESCs to get close to the sledgehammer, which of course is an MGM LMT setup, but it's super expensive. It works great, but it's expensive. This is a very clever way to maximize because like you said, I mean, we, we are trying to hit high RPM, but we're limited to like available technology, right? So, so there's certain motors that are out there that are like unobtainium or super expensive or whatever, but we have to be practical. And that's the nice thing about your setup. Your setup is probably still half the price of the sledgehammer setup. And it should come fairly close to the performance of it, I think, particularly in your application, because that was going to be my next question. Where are you starting horsepower-wise with your 5.3 and your Miata? And where do you want to get to? All right. Um, Starting horsepower, um, when I built the car, I had it dyno-tuned at Hawks Performance down in Easley, South Carolina. It made 376 to the wheel. Um, Currently, I've kind of backed the tune off a little bit. Um, It's probably in the realm of about 360, 350 to the wheel currently. projected goals that i want to see is is right around 500 to the wheels so when i first heard about your project i was thinking to myself well one of the reasons why like the sledgehammer draws so much power we've seen thirty-five thousand watts out of it is because we're pushing it into the choke region of the map and that was my concern with your project initially it was like yeah you're just going to push it further into the choke region until i talked to you a little bit more and found out like where your horsepower goals where you're starting from and where you're what you're shooting for it actually works pretty well so how far along are you on this project like how close are you to actually getting us some numbers charge piping that's going to be the biggest thing honestly everything else has been pretty smooth sailing it's just getting the charge piping to the front of the engine uh, from the trunk so i already have the mounting um in the trunk everything's good there i'm going to be working on the esc and battery mounts today um, but aside from that, it's just getting the intake piping to the front of the car. So I would say probably about a month. So when I get the dyno set up here, are you going to bring it down to Alex Labs? If we can time it for uh, you know appropriate trip, I mean, just getting the vehicle down there shouldn't be too difficult. It's pretty reliable. Right here, right now, I'm challenging you to a grudge race. Um, I think you got me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we can, we can talk about lengths, car lengths, whatever. You can get the move. I'm good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be very fun, um, for sure. I definitely traction limited, so I don't think I could achieve nines like you. <laughs> well, yeah, I've realized something about putting up my track videos and all that is that most people, like, they just don't care about quarter mile times. They just don't mean anything. So what I'm going to start doing, and actually Alex Labs happens to be about half an hour away from Santa Machine, so you racers out there know what they make. They make uh, really, really high-end struts and shocks. Uh, So I'm going to start racing cars in a no-prep type of street type of environment. Now, I'm not going to do any street racing. Of course, that would be illegal. We don't do such things. But... We maybe start picking on some supercars with our electric turbo cars and show the world what these things can really do. So thanks, David. Thanks for sharing your project. It's super, super cool. I really love it. 
It was one of these things, like I said, it, it's, it's, this is totally uncharted territory for all of us. So I'm glad to see the belt is holding up, just like on, on my little P2 setups as well. But it's just a really cool project. I'm really looking forward to your results. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the, the praise and compliments. It means a lot coming from someone who's pretty much pioneered everything thus far. <laughs> Thanks, man. So, yeah, so if you're interested in doing your own project, you know, be sure to check out the forum at electrifiedboost.com. There's not only David and myself there. There's another guy named WB Projects who also has a YouTube channel. He's a machinist out of uh, Canada. He's had some successes. He's having a few ESC issues right now, but he's working through them. But he has seen five or six PSI of Boost on his little hot hatch. And there's a whole bunch of other people. Thanks so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe. And I'll catch you all in the next one.